وقت ویس لی وقت ویس لی ان دس کیپشن وی ہیڈ میڈیٹیشن فار تھری ویکس The Spirit of the Lord was speaking to the church. Walk it wisely. He is saved. Walk it wisely is saved. He that walks wisely is saved. Delivered. So we were able to share 20 points in it. And how many of you remember all the 20 points? Has he one hand at the back? This is uh, Thambi. Okay, I'll call that. Uh, please come forward. One who knows the 20 points. Is it John? Yes, wonderful. Just give him a big hand. This 20 points, what he's going to share with us itself is a, a revision. And we are very glad. He's one of my aides. Uh, I'm proud of him. Yes. Start. Will make others glad. Will make, make others glad. But not others, actually, parents, teachers, those who are concerned of you. Make them glad. Very nice. Second. Will take counsel. Yes. Third. Will listen to counsel. Okay. The second one, he will take correction. And the third one, he will listen to counsel. Okay. The fourth one. Abide with laws. Oh, wonderful. Wise man, whatever the rules and regulations, whatever the laws, you will go by that, yes, that's right, son. Fifth one. Accept, refuse. Ah, accept, reprove. If anybody shouts at him, scolds him. Do you accept, son? Hello. Do you accept when others scold you? Okay, you are a wise boy. Nice. The sixth one. Lay up knowledge. Okay, he will gather up knowledge. The seventh one. Use the knowledge, like, right. He has used, whatever the knowledge he has gathered up, he will use that knowledge correctly. Very good. The eighth one? Gives ah. counsel. Yeah, it's not just he gives counsel. Even if you sit and talk with him, there will be something that you can learn. That's right. He gives a very good answer. He gives a learning. From him we can learn many things. The ninth one? Tongue is a tonic. His tongue is a tonic. It's a, not just a medicine. It's a tonic that will make others strong. The tenth one? They will turn away from others. They will turn away the wrath from others. If anybody is angry, mommy is angry, daddy is angry, he would be able to turn away the wrath from them. It's very good. Give him a big hand. Give him a big hand. <laughs> we'll continue. So now we are sure that you can give all the 20 points. Now I love to give this chance to somebody. Anybody else wants to continue from 11? You can go. Ma. Thank you. Just give him a big hand again. Encourage him. Oh, we are proud. You can continue from 11? Yes, you continue from 11. I have achieved. Win souls. He wins souls. Very good. God's knowledge will uh. make a wise man strong. Oh, wow. God, the knowledge he has gained, that will make him very strong. Very good. The 13. Humble-minded. When he has got that knowledge, he will also be Humble minded, very good. That 14. Understanding the way. He understands correctly. He discerns his ways correctly. 15. Restraint mm. things in his heart. He knows what is to keep in his heart, what is to share in his heart. He restrains in his heart. 16. Turns away from evil. He turns away from anything that is evil. Very good. 17. He draws wheel over the wicked. That is able to remove the chaff from the wicked and take the grain out of him. It's not punishing him, it's not crushing him. A wise man will know how to take the chaff away from the grain. It's really good. The 18th one, son? Prosperous life. Prosperous life. There will be prosperity in his house. The 19th one. Wisdom builds the house. Very good. Wisdom builds the house. Wisdom builds the family. Very nice. The last point, the 20th one. Desire noble things. He will desire noble things. Very good. Give him also a very big hand. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We have the reading from James chapter 3 from verse 13 through 18. We just have an exposition of this passage. Verse 13. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Is a very straight question. Who is the wise person? And endued with knowledge among this group. Who is the wise man? In your family, who is the wise person? Among your relatives, who is the wise person? It's not a deception, I think that I am wise. Here we get a beautiful picture. Who is the wise man? And endued with knowledge among you. Who is a wise man? Who is endued with knowledge among us? <coughs> he says how we could identify a wise man. Three things we see in this verse. Let him show out of a good conversation the works with meekness of wisdom. So who is that good man? Who is the wise man endued with knowledge? Three parameters. He shows good conversation. Good conversation is not speaking one to another alone. In the Old English, King James Version, conversation speaks about our behavior. Husbands, wives or children, don't act too smart. Ah, oh, I know everything. Who is among you? Between the husband and wife, who is among you a wise person? Who is among you endued with knowledge? Ah, I know, you be quiet. Who is that wise person? Who is endued with knowledge? The first parameter, the first parameter, he will show out, because it's in him. Outwardly he will show. A good behavior. The word conversation means behavior. In your class, in your college, who is a wise person? One who has got a good behavior. Endued with knowledge, one who has got good behavior. When we say good behavior, the dress, hairstyle, the way he walks, the way he sits, the way he smiles, the way he laughs, is a wise person. Endued with knowledge. When she smiles, she knows what length her lips can go. Because she's a wise person. When she laughs loud, she is a wise person. She knows how loud she can laugh. How loud she can laugh when she is with her friends, when she is in the house, when she is with other classmates, with boys and girls. She is a wise girl. How loud she could laugh. If she knows how to behave herself or himself, himself, himself. he is a wise person endued with knowledge. Among you, husband and wife, who is the wise person? One who has got a good behavior is the wise person. He doesn't have a good behavior to get up in time. He doesn't have a good behavior to dress properly. He doesn't have a good behavior in eating. He doesn't have a good behavior in loving his children, his wife. He doesn't have a good behavior to set an example. How can he be a wise person? That wife is not a ma that mother is not a model to her own children. Children cannot learn virtues from her mother. What all children can learn from her mother is only vices. How can that mother be a wise person? Who is wise among you? If anybody is hurt, I am happy. I want to hurt you. That is not my intention. But the truth is this. 
If you can't wise behavior, don't brag as if you are a wise person. It is absolute nonsense. The first characteristic for a wise person, mother, a father, a daughter, husband, wife, whosoever it may be, among you, who is the wise person, one who, has, one who can show out good behavior. Behave properly. Whatever your learning may be. If you can't behave properly, you're not a wise person. How you should behave in a church? You must know how you should dress when you go for a swim. You must know how you should dress when you go for the church. You must know how you dress to your college. You must know you're a wise person. You're a wise person. You cannot imagine somebody with wearing suit and all going for a swim. Similarly, when you go to the church, you must also know how you should dress. Otherwise, there's, there's a mental derailment. There's a mental derailment. When there is a mass mental derailment, anybody with a sense will be called mad. Because everybody is mad. Somebody with a good sense will be called a mad. In Tamil, there is an expression. Nirvana urla common and get no paitekar. Ella nirvana marka or ever the common and get you to car. Ella and a paitekar na papangla. That's what's happening. Number and wise person shows a good behavior. And also in his talks, also. A good behavior. And number two, a wise person shows his good behavior with good works. Your works must be good. You must be able to help your husband. You must be able to help your wife. You must be able to help one another in the church. You must be able to help uh, to get this place organized. We all are sitting here comfortably. Can anybody say what is your contribution to make this place neat, clean, to spread the chairs, to arrange the mics? How many have you helped? Any good work today? There were some boys, one sister came, swept, some sisters helping in the cooking. Some of them are helping in the cooking, some of us are eating with that cooking. That's all. A contributory member in your family also. Suppose your father is driving the bike. The child, the son can at least clean the bike. He cries, he fights to get a bike. He doesn't even have a heart to maintain that bike. And he will brag as if he is a very knowledgeable person. Rubbish. Third rate nonsense. Who is a wise person among you? One who can do good works. One who can do good works. Girls, are you doing any good work? Helping your mother? Helping your father? Helping in the church? Helping in your class? In your school? In your college? Is there anything good you have done? It's not just earning money and throwing it into the house. That's Even if you don't do that, you're not a human being. You're not fit to be the head of the family. If you can't provide for your family, the Bible says. And one who cannot provide for his family is worse than an infidel. He's worse than an infidel. Don't brag as if you are a wise person. You are not wise, you are foolish. Who is wise? One who can do good works. One who can do good works. So good conversation, good behavior, good works, and the third one that is very, very essential for you and I. Do that good works with meekness, with gentleness, with humility. 
A wise person will always be humble-minded, not shouting, yelling, yelling at the husband, yelling at the wife, yelling at the children, yelling at the parents, cowboys yelling at one another, only yelling, 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 shouting. A good person, a wise person will take reproofs, but he will not be going on shouting. Correcting the children or correcting on whom we have got a responsibility, I don't say it is wrong. Even do that with meekness. Do that with gentleness. So good conversation, uh, that's good behavior. That good behavior com coupled with good works, and good behavior, good works, with gentleness, with meekness. Remember the three parameters of a wise man, three parameters, three conditions to identify a wise man. We'll go to verse 14. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. Suppose you have got bitter envying. What do you mean by bitter envying? The word envying is not jealousy, literally. This envying is zeal. As a wise person, or at least a, you, you assume that you are a wise person, and you have got zeal for something even zeal for some religion. And if you do that zeal, if you exhibit that zeal with bitterness, you are not a wise person. Zeal for something, even zeal for church, zeal for punctuality, whatever it may be. You must have a grace to help others, there should be learning in your lips. That's a wise person. There should be learning in your lips. We can apply different methods, a humor, a joke, sometimes we can reprimand. But it's not bitterness in our heart. Even the zeal, in other words, it is a selfish ambition. Oh, my husband must do this for me. My wife must do this for me. My parents must buy, get me a, a smartphone. My, why should they give birth to me if they don't can, if they can buy me a smartphone? That's a bitter zeal. That's a bitter zeal. That is called gentle jealousy. The literal meaning is a bitter zeal. And because of the bitter zeal, the strife. The strife is literally contention. You contend, you argue. You argue with one another. Why, that is, why is there argument? It is simply because if I and Jephthah argue on something, why do you argue on something? It is simply because I think I am right. Jephthah thinks he is right. Because of our self-conceit. Because we strongly believe I, I am right. Your husband and wife, they argue. Why is there an argument? Why is there an argument? Because he thinks he is right and she thinks she is right. I put it in another way, because he thinks he knows better than her and she thinks she knows better than him. Suppose she thinks she doesn't know, she may not argue. She may not argue. She says, hundred rupees, a thousand rupees. With this thousand rupees, 
He wants to buy food. She wants to buy dress. They are arguing. He says, food is very important. You are nonsense, idiot. You don't know this. She thinks, no, 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 this dress is very important. One meal we can skip. Probably with equal rights, she may say, you idiot, you nonsense, stupid, you don't know. Even if they say, if they don't say outwardly, they'll be saying all these things inwardly. That's why there's an argument. The moment you think the other person is right, there will not be any argument. The moment you accept my husband is right, there may not be any argument. A time to avoid argument, you may be quiet, but in your heart you will be thinking he is nonsense, he is stupid, he is foolish, he is ignorant. Probably with different degrees you will use the same words within your heart. Maybe you don't want to have a quarrel in front of your children, maybe because you are scared of him beating. So you may not shout, you may not argue, you may not say back. And in your heart you will be saying, go to hell. But all these things, he is wrong. He is absolutely wrong. He should not do it. But in your heart you know that you are right. So here it says, if there is bitter strife, a bitter envying, and because of that bitter envying, bitter contention, you are not wise. Two things. Number one, don't glory about it. It is not literally fighting, even if it is in your heart. That self-ambition is in your heart, that zeal is in your heart. A holy zeal is different. A zeal and a holy zeal, how we can define. There is fire in the word seraphim. Say the word seraphim means fire, lightning, fire. So there is fire in seraphim. There is fire in the hell. That is the difference between holy zeal and selfish zeal. Both are fire. But fire of seraphim is different. Fire in the hell is different. A holy zeal is different. A bitter zeal is different. Many times the bitter zeal begets a rich. We come to that conclusion because of that whole zeal. And that zeal develops arguments, contention. What you say is wrong, what I say is right. If you have this nature among you, so Pastor, we both have got that nature, we both are fools. In our family, everybody has got the nature, it's a family of fools. It's very simple. The Bible says, if anybody has got this nature, number one, glory not. Don't be proud about it. Don't be proud about your arguments and all. Number two, lie not against the truth. Lie not against the truth means, it's not against lying against the biblical truth. No, no, no. Here literally means, lie not against the truth. In truth, you are a fool. Don't lie not against the truth. Don't act as if you are a wise person, knowledgeable person and uh, telling everybody, you don't know, you don't know, you don't know. Oh, you don't know, be quiet. Oh, you don't know, be quiet. You are lying against the truth. Truth is, you don't know. You think that I know. That is, that's against the truth. Lying not the truth means don't behave as if you know. Who is a wise person among you? Number one, he will have good behavior. He will have good works. And he will exhibit that good behavior and good works with gentleness. And a wise person, he will not have bitter envying, number one. 
a wise person will not have this contention nature nature of contention arguing opposing anything and everything and if anybody has got that he should not glory in it he is lying against the truth we go to verse 15 this wisdom descended not from above what is this wisdom the wisdom to say that i know everything and getting into a zeal even a religious argument oh i am right wearing jewels is right no no wearing jewels is not right it should be a holy flame it should not be a bitter uh, envying bitter zeal you should not look down upon others okay they 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 are right in their own way let god reveal the truth to them if i am wrong let me change is not that intention with i am right even just for an example i tell you i started studying on jewelry not thinking that i am right even if i had done wrong lord i want to correct it so teach me the lord taught me i became stronger in it but till this day i never had a bitter zeal i never showed bitter zeal on this or i know i share with others your zeal is right that should be the flame of seraphim your zeal should not be the fire of hell okay we'll go to verse 15 this wisdom this zeal i am right that contention nature this wisdom descended not from above this wisdom you got this ah, i am right my husband is wrong whatever i say he doesn't accept this type of arguing wisdom this wisdom is not from above this wisdom is from the earth or from the bottom the bottom is not earth maybe literally from the hell even the zeal on doctrines without love without love fighting the denominational fights almost the same type of understanding but one denomination burning the church of the other denomination that zeal that is not from above oh my denomination is right there were two denominations earlier cms and spg both became csi later the cms and the spg they will be fighting against one another they will burn the church of these people the prayer house of these people and they will burn the prayer of these people that's a holy zeal no that's a fire of hell that wisdom it doesn't descend from above it is from hell the wisdom to say that i am right she is wrong that wisdom is from hell because that begets strife that begets contentions that begets argument that is from the bottomless pit that is sensual that is from bottom and that sensual is out of your own senses that's not godly an unsaved person who is motivated only by the natural impulses she or he may have that but we are moved by the holy spirit we have got the wisdom from above so we cannot have a wisdom that can lead to argument a wisdom that can make us think that i am right and others wrong that wisdom is from the devil is from the bottomless pit it is sensual and it is devilish you are arguing with your husband you are fighting you say i am right i will not like whatever you say i will not accept i am right that is from the devil i don't say you are wrong but that is from the devil 
If you are a wise person, there will be learning in your lips. It will make him learn. There will be tonic in your lips. You, you will got the wisdom to turn away his wrath. You got wisdom. There's no need for argument, there's no need for fight, there's no need for weeping, gnashing up teeth. That is the scene of the hell. That simply tells us whether we have got wisdom or not. That wisdom is from the bottom, that is from the hell. It's not just from the earth, it is from the bottom, it's from the hell. It is just sensual. Nature of an unborn person, nature of an unsaved person. It is shame to say that we are saved. If you are saved, we may not have that wisdom. We may not have that wisdom. A wisdom to say that I am right, you are wrong. If the mother-in-law thinks that I am right and the daughter-in-law is wrong, that wisdom is from the hell. The daughter-in-law thinks that my mother-in-law is always wrong. Only I am right. Show that with your good works that you are right. Show that with your behavior that you are right. Show that with meekness. Then you are a wise person and endued with knowledge. If, you have, if that wisdom helps you or leads you to a bitter zeal, if that knowledge leads you, the knowledge that you are right, leads you to a bitter contention, that wisdom is not from above, it is from the de hell, it is devilish, it is just sensual. It is just sensual. Then what is the wisdom from above? That's the, what is the wisdom from above? We'll continue next week, God willing.